ABC News, around the world, and into your home. This is 2020 with Barbara Walters and John Stossel's column, Give Me a Break. Tonight, we track them down, federal judges, at the pool, on the golf course, being wined and dined during seminars, quietly paid for by America's big corporations, companies that might one day find themselves in court, his court, or his, or his. You wouldn't call this a junket? Oh, no, I don't call it. Well, depends on what you mean by a junket. The judges say these classes keep them informed, but whose agenda are they learning? Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross follows the money so you can judge for yourself. And now, from Times Square in New York, Barbara Walters. Good evening, and welcome to 2020. When you think of judges, what image comes to mind? Probably someone who is fair and impartial, and hopefully someone who can't be swayed by anything but the facts. Well, tonight, a 2020 investigation takes you to one of the country's finest, most luxurious resorts. And who do we find there? Federal judges, staying for free. Who's picking up their tab? Why are they there? Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross with answers that you might want to hear. After all, one day you may be facing one of these judges. Three o'clock on a glorious Tuesday afternoon in Tucson, Arizona. Hold it. It's the middle of the workday for most people. But here at one of the top golf courses in the country, a group of U.S. federal judges, their courtrooms and black robes far away, is finishing up the ninth hole. Afternoon. Across the fairway, two other federal judges from Iowa, where it was cold and snowy on this December day, are heading for a tough par five. How was the game? Uh, we're not done. We're just in the third hole. And at the swimming pool, there's a federal judge from Ohio doing laps, while another one from California leisurely catches up on some sun and the newspapers. All part of an educational program that others call an entirely inappropriate junket. You wouldn't call this a junket? Oh, no. I don't call it. Well, depends on what you mean by a junket. They're all here for the week at the luxurious Omni Tucson along with about a dozen other federal judges, courtesy of a little-known but well-financed organization which finds golf resorts a nice place to help educate the judges. That's a very useful place to have a conversation, uh, in my experience. Each year, about one in ten federal judges will attend similar private gatherings at some of the finest resorts in the country, virtually free sponsored by a handful of groups which get their money from big corporations and pro-business organizations with a lot more in mind than just a few rounds of golf. This is the way corporate America is lobbying the judiciary, teaching judges to rule as if they were a corporate CEO. Doug Kendall is the director of the Community Rights Council, a nonprofit environmental group that has linked the judges' seminars with what it calls the 10 most dramatic rulings against environmental protection laws. We found that in all 10 of those cases, the judge writing the opinion had been to at least one of these junkets. In six of those 10 cases, the judge was attending a junket while the case was pending before them. One of them, a case involving the timber industry and a federal judge, who, after attending one of the private seminars, completely reversed an earlier position to the benefit of the timber industry. Although the judge denies, the seminar affected his decision. He came back, he switched his vote, and he wrote the opinion striking down a critical portion of the Endangered Species Act. It turns out that corporations and pro-business groups have quietly been spending millions of dollars to finance such lavish outings for judges. Here in Tucson, after a morning of classroom lectures, the judges headed to lunch poolside. At taxpayer expense, U.S. Marshals were assigned to guard the judges throughout the week, although they never did spot our 2020 undercover team. This particular seminar was sponsored by what's known as the Law and Economics Center, run out of the law school of George Mason University in suburban Washington a school whose pro-business teachings have made it a favorite among many corporate executives. That's the niche that George Mason filled. 
The judges' week included seven separate sessions, which the school says offer differing viewpoints, and that over the years have included Nobel Prize winning economists. But others call the sessions here a kind of ideological boot camp. It's famous as a conservative right-wing law school. One lecturer this week in Tucson was a professor who calls himself an anarchist economist, well known for his views about who is responsible for industrial pollution. What he says is that if the neighbor didn't live by the steel company, the pollution wouldn't be hurting or killing anyone. It's as much the neighbor's fault as it is the corporation's fault. And so you have part junket, part bias seminar, and problems on both ends. But the judges we talked to on the golf course had nothing but praise for the seminars, including Judge William Osteen of North Carolina. George Mason does a terrific job. Why do they hold it here instead of at their campus in Washington, D.C.? You'll have to ask them about that. Could it be the weather, do you think, in the golf course? I don't know about that. You'll well, have what, do you, to ask what do you think? I don't have any thoughts about that. Federal Magistrate Paul Zoss and Bankruptcy Judge William Edmonds, both of Iowa, said they had earned the right to a little relaxation, even if they didn't know who paid for it. Well, we worked all, all morning. I haven't taken a vacation all year. Is, is this your vacation? Yeah, this is my vacation. Yeah, yeah. This is vacation. And, and who pays for it? Um, it's the Institute. And where do they get their money, do you know? I have no idea. In fact, the corporate sources of the money are not made public by the George Mason Law School, which is located a long way from the golf courses of Tucson, in the suburban sprawl of Arlington, Virginia. No seminars for judges are held here. These are uh, academic uh, retreats. What could be more natural than for a law school uh, to seek to uh, train academic uh, judges? Why does it have to be at a golf course? Uh, it is a retreat. Dean Mark Grady, who rejects the conservative label many have attached to his law school, says he cannot understand why anyone would object to the programs for federal judges, which he says are unbiased, or why anyone would raise questions about the source of the money. It comes from major corporations, that's right. I'm not, I'm not disputing that it comes from major corporations. Uh, and in fact, I... Which I, ones? Which major corporations? It comes from a variety of major Can corporations. Can you give me the names, your three or four biggest? We do not publicize our, our, our sources of funding because uh, the academic uh, program stands on its own uh, feet. Good shot. The corporate names used to be publicized until 1994, around the time criticism of the program began. The list was a who's who of Fortune 500 companies, many with numerous cases before the federal courts, and also included a foundation run by a reclusive, ultra-conservative multimillionaire, Richard Mellon Scaife best known for financing investigations of President Clinton's personal life. But the dean refused to talk about who is on the list now, including SCAFE. Does it include the uh, SCAFE Foundation? Does it include the SCAFE Foundation? Um, as I say, we do not publicize our sources. But our 2020 investigation found tax documents showing SCAFE, through the foundation he runs, continues to help pay for the judge's free trips some one hundred fifty thousand dollars last year alone to be honest with you i don't understand why you're making such a big production out of this what where are you going with this what difference would it make if the scape foundation or any other foundation donated to these programs a significant difference in the view of two leading ethics experts we talked with judges are allowed to attend such seminars but the two experts say, under the ethics rules for judges, the judges have a responsibility to determine who's paying for their free week at the golf resort to avoid possible conflicts with pending cases. The week after this seminar, Judge Osteen of North Carolina was assigned a major case involving the Philip Morris Company, which, at least in the past, was publicly listed as giving money for the George Mason seminars. Philip Morris refuses to say if it still contributes. I have no idea where they raise their money, but have it comes you understood through. They, they receive it from corporations, from uh, conservative uh, nonprofit groups. No, I have not understood that. They don't tell us that. Judge Neil Biggers of Mississippi. Don't you think you ought to find out? Not necessarily, because what difference? I, if I don't know who is uh, paying for it, then I'm not going to be uh, affected either way by. It. Well, aren't you affected by who they choose to speak to you? Not at all. It's an educational thing. At night in Tucson, the money from Richard Scaife and others pays for the day's final activity. Cocktails and dinner on the veranda. All part of the plan to make everyone comfortable 
and all, according to one distinguished former judge, creating for those on the outside the appearance of improper and unethical behavior. I think judges should realize that, that they don't have that much credibility to spare. As chief judge of the powerful D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals for years, Abner Mikva says he was appalled to see many of his own colleagues, good judges, he says, being wined and dined by corporations in the name of judicial education. The appearance of impropriety is, is considered as important as the impropriety itself. I don't care if the judge can pass a lie detector test to prove that he wasn't reached. And it doesn't matter how the judge rules. What matters is that the people who have to accept that decision as having been made in the merits are suspicious. And our 2020 investigation also found many judges attend more than one of the free seminars, including James Jarvis of Tennessee. This was his fifth seminar. When we talked to him in Tucson, he wanted to stress the judges pay their own greens fees. There's no sin in playing golf as far as I know. And, uh, but you're, you're I, paid a for I paid for this. Who paid for the room? Well, uh, George Mason paid for the and room. Who paid for the uh, airplane ticket? I, well, I paid for one, but I'm, I expect to be reimbursed. Judge Jarvis told us he had no idea who the corporate sponsors were. But our 2020 investigation found that since he began attending the seminars, Judge Jarvis has presided over at least six cases involving large corporations, all of which confirmed to us they were at the time helping to pay for the George Mason seminars. Judge Jarvis says any suggestion that he is being influenced by the free trip or the classroom courses is wrong. Well, I, can, I can understand that you all could spin it that way if you want to. I mean, that's, that's your business. That you're in the news business. And the judges from Iowa said they regarded the seminars as a valuable educational experience, but that they couldn't possibly be influenced by a free vacation. Nobody's tried to influence me. I know that. And I don't, perhaps? Think, I don't think I'm influenceable. But the judges may not know just what their hosts have in mind then. The law school dean openly boasts of trying to influence the thinking of federal judges at the private luxury seminars. Well, we're proud of that. So you're out to change the judges' minds? We are, yes, we are, we are out to influence minds. And if court cases are changed as a consequence? If court uh, cases are changed, uh, then uh, that is something uh, that uh, we are proud of as well. And by the most recent count, at least 550 federal judges in this country, including two Supreme Court justices, have quietly accepted free trips to the George Mason luxury seminars. Most of the time we think about judges with more respect and more deference than we think about our elected officials. I want to keep that distinction. We don't want judges to be considered just another bunch of politicians. Brian Ross's investigation has already prompted reaction in Washington. Today, two senators who have been fighting unsuccessfully for legislation to ban federal judges from accepting free luxury seminars say that they will try again later this month.